हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड नमस्ते एवरीवन आई एम धवल सर एंड अवर टुडेज टॉपिक इज योर सिविक्स चैप्टर दैट इज योर चैप्टर नंबर थ्री इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट चैप्टर फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज इन दिस चैप्टर यू विल अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज कंस्टिट्यूशन सो टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज कंस्टिट्यूशन let us begin with the uh, introductory paragraph of your textbook which says that to play a game we need to follow so many rules and regulations and if such rules and regulations are not there then we won't be able to enjoy game in a right way right uh, many a times you might be playing games with your friends and everyone and you might have noticed that before starting the game you decide some rules and regulations why these rules and regulations are necessary because if there is no rule and regulation in a game then we won't enjoy playing the game in a fair way right cheating may arise and we don't enjoy the game okay so rules and regulations are very necessary okay then if there is rules and regulations then it becomes very interesting for us to play the game okay similarly you can imagine that if a game requires so many rules and regulations to be followed then how many rules and regulations will be required for a country to run safely right so it is a very important question that if a small game needs so many rules and regulations then a country like india right in which there are lakhs and lakhs of people crores of people then to manage that country effectively that means to run that country smoothly how many rules and regulations are necessary right so in order to run our country safely and properly a systematic compilation of set of rules to run the government of a country is formed which is known as constitution of our country okay again i'll say that is a systematic compilation compilation means what right so compilation means uh, to gather the information together right from different different sources we gather the information and we put that information at one place that is known as compilation so a systematic compilation of set of rules that means in our constitution there are different set of rules which are framed right from different point of view or different perspectives and which are written at a single place to run our country smoothly which is known as our constitution okay so constitution can be in a written or oral form right here you can see that is the constitution can be in the written or unwritten form unwritten form or oral form right so from this i can say that our india's constitution is the largest or the longest written constitution in the whole world right so this thing is very important to learn that our india's constitution is the largest or the longest constitution and even it is the written constitution okay it is the written constitution and which is in the largest or the longest form in the whole world okay then immediately a question arises to us that why do we need a constitution or what if there was no constitution right so the answer to this is that no country can function without a constitution how uh, you can imagine that if you are going outside your house if you are going somewhere and someone comes to you and points a gun at you he loots away right he does robbery or loots away to you then what will happen if there are no rules and regulations you won't be able to do anything then we'll take another example if there is a fight taking place between two different person or a people or a group of people and in the fight they kill each other 
no rules and regulations are there then what will happen every time whenever there is a fight or every time we don't like anyone will kill that person and will not be worried about what will happen to us because there are no rules and regulations right so for a country to run effectively it is very very important that there should be some systematic set of rules and regulations which is compulsory for all the people to follow and so that the country can run effectively so in our country such systematic set of rules and regulations to run the government is known as constitution okay is it clear everyone fine so we can say that constitution is a document which finally views the ethos and ideals of a country ethos means what so constitution is a document which states it shows us that is the ethos means the spirit or a spirit of a culture of a community and its attitude right and ideals ideals means what so ideals means the standard or the principles which are aimed right so we can say that our constitution that is the constitution of india shows us the characteristic spirit of our culture right in our constitution our culture is represented right what is the standard of our country what are the principles of our country all these things are mentioned in our constitution okay now the constitution tells us about the kind of government our country would have right right now i am discussing about constitution that what are the features of constitution or how or in what way the constitution is helpful or useful to us or what kind of information does a constitution provide to us right so as i said that the constitution tells us about the kind of government we would have right so if we will know that what kind of government we will have then and then only we can come to know that how our country will be run by such government okay so as i said our constitution tells us about what kind of government our country would have how to run the administration of our country right so the question or the answer to all these questions will be provided in our constitution okay so all these things are mentioned in our constitution and if we have a look at our constitution then it begins with a preamble so this is the most important part right here you can see the preamble of our constitution right so our constitution begins with the preamble so what is preamble right so preamble of the constitution is the brief introductory statement right it is a very short statement that sets out guidelines that means it gives us guidance right it sets out guidelines principles and philosophy of the constitution that means it tries to tell us that what does our constitution consist of what are the guidelines in the constitution what are the principles which are written in the constitution and on what philosophy the constitution is written all the things whatever i have told is written in the preamble okay that is a preamble of the constitution that means the preamble of our constitution gives us an idea about what are the objectives of our constitution when did our constitution implement or the date of adoption of the constitution then what are the different states or the nature of our indian states right so all these things are mentioned in the preamble of our constitution now we will discuss our preamble line by line so as you can see it starts with we the people of india have solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice 
सोशल इकोनॉमिक एंड पॉलिटिकल लिबर्टी ऑफ थॉट एक्सप्रेशन बिलीफ फेथ एंड वर्शिप इक्वालिटी ऑफ स्टेटस एंड ऑफ ऑपॉर्चुनिटी एंड टू प्रमोट अमोंग देम ऑल फेटर्निटी अश्योरिंग द डिग्निटी ऑफ इंडिविजुअल एंड द यूनिटी एंड इंटीग्रिटी ऑफ द नेशन सो दिस इज वॉट इज रिटर्न इन अवर कंस्टिट्यूशन सो वील अंडरस्टैंड इट वन बाय वन राइट सो हियर solemnly in the second line first word you can see solemnly solemnly means what so solemnly means with deep sincerity right solemnly resolved resolved means what so resolved means to firmly determine right if we are determined to do something very firmly that means resolved so we the people of india have solemnly resolved that means we have sincerely decided or we are determined to constitute india into a sovereign so here sovereign means what sovereign means that it has powers that is we are talking about india right india has powers to make or enact any laws on any subject that means the indian government can make any laws or it can implement any laws on any subject right so we can say that india is a sovereign state which means that it is an independent authority and it is not dependent on any other external power so there is a meaning of sovereign in simple words if we say sovereign means it has the power to do whatever it wants to without the control of anyone then comes the word socialist socialist means social and economic equality right so here social equality means absence of discrimination discrimination means bhedbhav right so without any discrimination on the grounds of caste color creed creed means uh it means a system of <coughs> religious belief or a faith right so sociality uh, socialist means uh equality without any discrimination on the grounds or without any uh, without any discrimination on the grounds of color caste creed religion language etc right then comes the word secular secular means not connected with any religious or spiritual matter right secular means what that means our government is not connected or is not under the influence of any religious or spiritual group okay then it is the word democratic democratic means for the people of the people and by the people okay so our country is a democratic country then comes the word republic republic means a state in which supreme power is held by the people and their elected representative and which has an elected <coughs> president rather than a monarch monarch means a king single person who is handling the whole kingdom is known as monarch so republic so india is a republic state also we can say like that why because it is a state in which the powers that is the power is held by the people the people are or the public is the supreme they have all the powers right they are the ones who run our country they through the election process elect their representatives and they run our country so as we have discussed the difficult words that is like sovereign socialist secular democratic republic etc right so we'll again read out the paragraph we the people of india have solemnly resolved that means we have decided to constitute india that means will form our india into a social secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens that means to provide our citizens with justice justice in which way that is social that means in the society whether you belong to a different religion caste color creed economic that means related to money and political okay so justice in all the way then liberty liberty means what liberty means freedom 
so freedom of thought freedom of expression belief faith and worship so we should have freedom that is liberty in all the fields okay then it is equality equality of status and of opportunity that means all the people all the citizen of the india should have equality that means whether he is a rich or a poor or he is a whether he is a vvip person or any other person his status in the country is equal right we cannot discriminate that person on the basis of his status and each and every person of our country should be provided with equal opportunity right and to promote among them all fraternity right so fraternity means what so fraternity means friendship and mutual support within a group okay so to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity again dignity means respect of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation so again integrity means undivided or we can say unity okay integrity means unity also so that's it what is mentioned in our preamble then further it is stated in our constituent assembly now what is constituent assembly so constituent assembly is a body right it is a body that is which is formed with the help of a group of people who are elected representatives right and they are gathered okay or they are assembled together in a body or in a group for the purpose of drafting a constitution or making any changes in the constitution okay so that group of people is known as constituent assembly okay so in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november that is 26th november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution so when was our constitution adopted or implemented that is 26th day of november 1949 right and this is the date when it was adopted that is when it was formed so there is another date which is very important for us to know that is 26th january 1950 this date is very important because on this day our constitution was actually implemented right 26th day of november 1949 is the date when our country adopted or formed or framed the constitution and 26th january 1950 is the day or date when our constitution was implemented and that is the reason means implemented means it came into force right it actually started in the working condition means it was enforced okay and that is the main reason why we say uh, why we celebrate our republic day on 26th january right because it is the biggest day for our country because our constitution was implemented and as i have discussed earlier that a constitution is a set of rules and regulations right so it is a very important day for us because on that particular day that is 26 january 1950 our constitution was implemented and we all were the happiest people because we can imagine that if our country does not have the constitution then it would become impossible for us to live our life with safety okay so here we end with the explanation of preamble of constitution right then it is given that how was the constitution of india formed okay so the constitution of india is the statement of national goals and aims such as democracy socialism secularism national unity etc all these things we have already discussed the constituent assembly was established it started working from the 9th december 1946 so this is the date when our 
Indians they formed a constituent assembly why it was formed as i have already discussed that it is formed or it was formed for the formation of the constitution the constituent assembly was formed of prominent and distinguished scholars and leaders so here prominent means what right prominent means important or famous people okay distinguished means what so distinguished means again very successful people who are who have achieved something great in their life and who deserves a great respect so such people are known as distinguished people okay so prominent and distinguished scholars and leaders so here scholars means people having extraordinary knowledge right so our constituent assembly was formed with the help of such distinguished scholars and leaders their political vision and foresight so their political vision that means today we are living with peace and security is just because of this people because this people were those who had thought about our future and who had framed all the laws and rules and regulations of our country okay leaders like jawaharlal nehru dr rajendra prasad sardar patel maulana abul kalam azad sham prasad mukherji sardar baldev singh etc provided their guidance so this all are the important people who have given their important contribution in the formation of our constitution frank anthony represented the anglo indian community now anglo indian community means what so it is a group of people who are a mixture of indian and british or english descent right as we all know that the britishers they had come to india and they had ruled for almost 200 years right so after the british left even there were still many people in our country uh for example i'll tell when the britishers who lived over here uh, they married some indian people right so the mixture of both the indians and the english people right so those who were born or living in india they have formed an anglo indian community right so this is the group of people who have formed the anglo indian community so here it is given that frank anthony represented the anglo indian community and hp modi represented the parsi community the committee had various constitution scholars like alladi krishna swami ayer dr b r ambedkar k m munshi etc so these are the scholars right who have helped us to form our constitution there were female member members like sarojini naidu and vijayalakshmi pandit okay so these are the uh, females okay who have even contributed their knowledge in forming our constitution then dr rajendra prasad was elected as the president of the constituent assembly so as i have told that constituent assembly was a body or a body which is formed with the group of people to form the constitution so for that assembly that is constituent assembly its head was dr rajendra prasad right so he was made the president of the constituent assembly there were a number of sub committees to take care of various aspect of constitution as we know that in law if you have heard about law right in law also there are many different kind of laws right in our country laws like domestic laws international laws uh, laws for the common people laws for the criminals right so these are the different different fields in which and there are still many different laws right laws for the business commerce and many other laws so all these different different laws when it is framed or formed they need experts in those particular field so as it is told that there were sub committees to take care of various aspect of the constitution that means for each and every aspect of the constitution right for framing different different laws different different committees were formed 
the drafting committee which was headed by dr b r ambedkar gave to the constitution its final shape that means when the constitution is framed first of all it is prepared all the guidance guidelines and everything is prepared right uh, taking the expert opinion of all the people and finally when everything is formed right finally the constitution is needed to be drafted that means the it it is needed to be finalized so for finalizing what is to be kept in the constitution and what is not to be kept dr b r ambedkar was made the head for that okay further total 166 meetings were held by the constituent assembly in a time period of 2 years 11 months and 18 days so such a long period right that is a period of 2 years 11 months and 18 days that is almost 3 years right it took for our leaders to frame our constitution on 26th november 1949 the committee passed the constitution that means the constitution was finalized which was enforced on 26th january 1950 enforced means it was implemented on 26th january as i told that our constitution was implemented and therefore uh, it was a very big achievement and a great day for us therefore we celebrate it in the form of republic day okay